Thanks for coming to get me, you guys. Hey, no problem. We spent thousands of dollars to send you here and made two trips to Florida in four days. I'm glad we had you. You make yourself comfortable, Beth. I'll be right back. Hi, young man. I'm looking for a good time. Uh-huh. I'm worldly. I'm fun. This ain't mileage. This is experience. This dude, but I know this big red one is the one you press to launch. Ooh, big red button. Snowy, now! <laughs> You know what? You only live once. I am sticking my head out the window. Yes! This is the best version of whatever's so enjoyable about this! Mom, I'm scared. I don't believe it. Are we really stuck in space? Oh, God, what if we have to live up here for the rest of our lives? I'm gonna miss drinking at the clam. Sayer. Hello? I know you all must be pretty terrified right now, but we're doing everything in our power to get you safely back to Earth. We're pretty good at this. Good afternoon, I'm Brian Williams. Our top story, an accidental space shuttle launch that has sent a Rhode Island family into orbit. For more on the story, we go to our local affiliate, Channel 5 Quahog, where Tom Tucker is on the scene. Tom? No, no, they might be dead. They, they also might still be alive. He's okay, I, I take. You know, what are you doing? I'm going out for a spacewalk, Lois. You know, this is our one chance to experience the awe-inspiring wonders of space firsthand. Hello? Hello? Crap, I think we lost him. Let me fix that. If radio DJs have taught me anything about radio, it's that you gotta do two things. Turn it up and... All right, come on, everyone. We gotta put our heads together and try to find a solution. Don't worry. Griffins have a long history of figuring stuff out. Like my great-grandfather, who invented the first marital aid. All right, come on. If Mission Control thought we could help get the shuttle out of orbit, it can't be that hard. Okay, okay, uh, uh, try this. Hit up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, be a start. Then we'll have unlimited lives. That's an egg that I hucked at you for being a nerd. Chris, if you think it'll help, just try it. Ah! We're spinning out! <laughs> Chris, what are you doing? Saving our lives. Ah, oh, I wish he hadn't said that. Now I'm kind of rooting against him. Oh, thank God! I can't believe I got to go to space before Derek Watson. Who's Derek Watson? Nobody now. Well, thanks to no gravity in space, my spine stretched, and I am now a confident 6'3". So, Lois, I will be leaving you for a hotter woman. Thanks, you guys. You bet, champ. Hey, by the way, who moved our house? Here you go, fellas. Thanks, Horace. Oh, here, let me get this one, Peter. Jeez, what the hell kind of stupid wallet is that, Joe? I pulled over some punk Harvard kid who gave me a bunch of lip, so I took his ID. Man, I bet they got fancy food up there at Harvard. Like them turkeys with paper shoes. Or pigs with apples in their mouths. Or them lambs, what ain't never seen the light before. Holy crap, this place is amazing! And just think, this is where Helen Kelly used to eat when she went here. Hey, was Beowulf a Teen Wolf sequel with Scott Bale? No. Ah, oh, then I just totally failed that medieval lit midterm. Hey, you guys noticed how many Asians there are at this school? I mean, how'd they all get so smart? I don't know. Guess that's just the way God made them. Gentlemen, I give you the Asian. Ooh. All right, this is more like it. Way better than that lame-ass college joint.
Oh, uh, hey, Stewie. Hey, sometimes when daddies drive home drunk, they come from far away places. Oh, man, what happened last night? I can tell you what happened. What the? Who the hell are you? Who the hell do you think I am, sweetie? Oh, my God, I... I married a hooker? Married? All right, bachelor party. Come on, back to Boston. This... this can't be possible. I can't be married to a prostitute. Where will you two be going on your scummy moon? And can I plan your bridal golden shower? Look, I don't remember anything about last night. How do I... how do I even know we're really married? I got our marriage certificate right here. It's legit. And it looks like I signed one of the witness lines and Peter partially signed the other. You know, Quagmire, I was thinking last night, I might remember Charmise from a stag party in 1991. Ask her if she remembers getting hit in the forehead with a meatball sandwich. Hang on, Quagmire, I'm not sure that's a good idea. Quahog has some extremely draconian laws governing divorce that all heavily favor the woman. What? What do you mean? Sorry, Quagmire, but the only way around the law is if the woman consents to a divorce. Consent? But Charmise will never agree to that. You heard her, the crazy skank wants to be a wife. She's found herself a husband and she's not letting go. And at least try to make things work with Charmise. Who knows, maybe, maybe it won't be that bad. After all, I liked her enough to marry her last night. I must have seen something in her. There you go, that's the spirit, buddy. There's a little bit of good in everyone. Except that president guy from the Hunger Games. He was pretty bad. Peter, what the hell's going on here? Lois, we're no longer one Nielsen family. We're a hundred. Hello, Mad Men Production Office. Yeah, Peter Griffin here. Could I speak with John Hamm, please? One moment. Hello? Look, your show is really boring. But don't worry, I got some ideas on how you can jazz it up. Listen, I don't need your suggestions, pal. I've been a big celebrity for a year and a half now. Lois, we're not watching Mad Men no more. What the hell was that? I'll tell you what it was, Lois. It was awesome. And wait till you see Breaking Bad. I don't know what it was, but now it's on roller skates. We now return to Cops with Banana Guns. So, it's called Creeping Up on the Kardashians. See that guy with the ponytail in the background? He sneaks up and scares the girls while they're starting businesses or getting their fat waxed. Ah! What the hell? There they are! That's the Nielsen family! You ruined television! Now it's just a big old silly mess! <laughs> You turned Anderson Cooper 360 into Anderson Cooper 720. He's turning around too much. You converted the biggest loser to the metric system. Now it feels like they're not losing enough. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. That's the first time I ever throwed anything. Well, if it isn't Mr. Nielsen himself. Nurse, who's the worst doctor in this hospital? You are, Dr. Hartman. Good. Put Hartman on this bozo. Hey, guys, how you doing? Not so good, Peter. Yeah, me either. Thanks to you, TV's a vast wasteland. You know how I know that phrase? I read it in a book, you monster! Not at my bar, you won't. Get out of here! Jeez, I can't show my face anywhere. I might as well be back doing public radio. This is Peter Griffin, and you're listening to Book... Hey, what's wrong, Peter? I miss my friends, Brian. I mean, I was having fun with those Nielsen boxes, but... What's the point if I don't got Joe and Quagmire to enjoy it with me? I guess I shouldn't have messed with television. Well, you still have these boxes. That means you still have the power to influence television. Maybe you can use that power to help restore TV to the way it was. You're right, Brian. Maybe if I watch smart, quality shows, that'll help get things back to the way they were. You know who I hate? The troops. Yeah, me too. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who are you? I'm Peter Griffin. I'm the guy who ruined television, and I'm the guy who's gonna fix it. Gentlemen, I have gathered you all here today because you are the creators of what television used to be before I ruined it. And we need to rebuild television from the ground up. Totally confused. Do it. Okay, now we're gonna need 15 workplace comedies where people talk to the camera for some reason. You, 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 and you. Go! Okay, Mark Burnett, you did Survivor and The Apprentice. Can you give me a reality show where people do horrible, unforgivable things to each other for embarrassingly small sums of money? I got some ideas. Here's a nickel. Pull down your pants. Oh. Kelsey Grammer, what are you still doing here? I, I have nothing left for you. I'm, I'm sorry. Ah! We now return to Mike and Molly. Have you decided what you'd like to order? Yes, the chopped salad. I'll have everything except that. 
You bet. Well, let's drink to having TV back in the hands of people who know what they're doing. I think Zack and Cody would be funnier if they did the show in their underpants.